Hello everyone, this is Count Yolo, bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And in today's video, despite what the picture kind of looks like, today I'm going to be talking about some away team setups. So that for those of you that, especially that don't like ground combat at all in this game, can basically just copy the, some of the stuff that I recommend in this video, and then you can just not even worry about ground combat ever again inside of Star Trek Online. Inside this video, I'll first talk about the arena of Sompek because that event is starting today on PC. That'll be super brief, and as to why I'm not going to be talking about Sompek builds until September, because that's when it's actually going to be a challenge. I'll talk about then my general setups and some abilities that I like for the different professions in the game for bridge officers, the general equipment that I typically put on my bridge officers, and then a couple of easy away team setups based on a couple of different categories. First, a couple of categories according to me, and then of course we'll show off the um, the common setup that Team Space Princess made many many years ago. At, at this point, it was a build that 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 they made pretty much when Delta Rising came out, back back when there's only two specializations, and thus that's why in that build they only use Command and Intel. We have more stuff now, and that's why my build looks like it's going to look pretty different to theirs. But anyway, feel free, feel free to see the time links in the description. There will not be a tail DW in this video. If you want certain certain things in this video, you will need to go to those parts of the video if you don't want to watch the entire thing. So to start off with, uh, the Reno Sompec is starting today on PC and next month on consoles. Um, it'll be running for a couple of weeks. And... Um, the thing that's going to be different about it this time is that for the feature TFO version, instead of it being an, a timed version or an untimed version, it's going to be, it goes until seven rounds are, are completed. After, after those seven rounds, the, uh, the TFO ends, you, you, get, you get your commendation, you get your key point token progress. For those of you that are on, on PC, Xbox doesn't get, get that, but on PC you do. And also there isn't a fail condition on this. Normally for the Reno Sompec, if all five um, members of the team are defeated at the same time, that is when the TFO ends. With that rare TFO, they'll come out later. That's the way it'll, it'll, it will be. But for the future TFO version, if all five of you are defeated, you you can still res, res back and, um, and, and continue on and, and, and keep on fighting in those rounds until you finish those seven rounds. Basically, what, what that means now is if, if your ground build is terrible, you, you can still play the TFO without feeling too bad about it. It's basically what, what it comes down to. Um, which also means I don't, I don't need to cover really, really good Arena Sonpec builds until the event is basically over. And we, and we get a regular TFO ground version um, on PC. So basically, I, I won't be covering a good Sonpec build until September. If not, a little bit later than that. So... That's why we're not going to be covering that today, and we're just we're covering something a little bit different instead. And that's bridge officer abilities, because, well, I I haven't talked about that too much on this channel yet. When it comes to the bridge officer professions themselves, um, my recommendations is to have two science bridge officers and one engineering and one tactical. I like to have at least one of each, just because there there are some bridge officer banter. Um, in, in a couple of the, of the missions, and if you don't have a tactical officer, quite often you have an officer who is yelling at themselves, which is kind of weird if you if you if you want to think about them being stable people inside of Star Trek Online. But anyway, um, science are are the best off officers for the AI of how the AI um, works for bridge officers. They are the, they are the best. They have the best. Well, they have a lot of heals as well as as, as good DPS potential. And I always have an, enge an engineer in my group, as, as long as I, I have at least two bridge officers, I always have one of them be an engineer, just because in a lot of the maps in Star Trek Online, enemies can spawn inside of walls, underneath the floor, inside the ceiling, and without a mortar, for a lot of those missions, that's like you have to defeat the enemies before you continue on. In those situations, without an engineer with, with a mortar, you literally cannot complete the mission or the, or the TFO, and thus you have to just abort the mission. If you have a, if you have an engineer, then you can have them just lay down their mortar, and then boom, the mortar will eventually defeat that enemy, and you can continue on. So because of because of that quirk in Search for Online, I always like having at least one engineer in, in my group. 
For tactical, as I said, it's I mainly have off one just because in some of the, some of the mission AI like um, discussions, it, it sometimes it can be really weird if if you don't have a tactical. The weapon AI is very very subpar in Star Trek Online for um, your bridge officers, so. If you don't want to have a tactical officer, you definitely don't have to. As, as you'll see later on in this video, for, for my suggestions for a tactical officer, I barely even use the tactical bridge officer abilities for my tactical officer in, 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 in my builds. So, that all said, for the general traits of bridge officers, I have covered this in a separate video. Um, generally, um, in enhancing their, their kit abilities, whether making them more powerful, making their special things aoe stuff better or making them making you able to spam the better is always nice or having the veteran trade to add passive dodge chance to your team is always helpful too there's a lot of other trades i cover basically all of them in this video besides like the couple of brand new ones that were added with like the most recent two two unique bridge officers over the past year when it comes to the training modules, we'll go through the different professions and the different specializations as to the ones that I like the best in the game. For science, I honestly could have put like every single one of them here, and there's honestly legitimate scenarios and missions where certain combinations are really, really good. I generally like these these group of abilities really, really well because you can use them in basically any situation and, and it'll work pretty well. Seismic Agitation Field is from the summer event. So, and that is wrapping up pretty soon. Um, these these are sellable on the exchange for um, for the for the for the bridge officer version. The captain version has to be purchased on each captain um, to be able to use it if if you are a science captain. Just kind of the way it is. Cool fusion flash is also powerful too, and that one is off is off of the exchange through a lockbox. And then of course we have we have our three standard he healing abilities for um, science. Melga Tricor is an instant heal. Vassar Regenerator is a, is, is a heal over, over time. And Nanai Health Monitor is, is a reactive heal that you, you can basically place on all of your allies. And then once one of them drops below a certain health threshold, then it'll start healing rapidly. Additionally, on, on this side, especially on elite difficulty for missions, it's nice to have some sort of interrupt so that, for instance, when the Heralds are charging up in a, in an attack that could easily one-shot you, uh, being able to interrupt that ability so that, so that it doesn't do that to you is actually pretty nice. I personally like Sonic Disruption the best from, from the summer event. However, the, the Electrogravity Field or the Sonic Pulse both are very serviceable as well and, and, and are a decent replacement for it if, if you don't want to grind that stuff to get it from, from the, summer, the summer event. Tricorder Scan is okay as well. Having um, given any damage to resistance running debuff to enemies and increasing their exposure chance is nice. However, with a lot of the AoE damage, especially from science that exists already, they're going to blow up really quickly, even if you don't use Tricorder Scan, with the exception of like a couple of the a couple of specific round bosses in in the game. Um, both of the different of both of the two high pipe sprays are also strong. Um, in my particular leveling build that I am going to show in, in a little bit, um, I, I need a high spray in the, the lieutenant rank. The other, the other hype of spray when my testing wouldn't work in the lieutenant rank, it only work out the lieutenant rank and higher, or the lieutenant commander rank and higher, so I use hyper spray dilavine di there. And hyperonic radiation is just a nice additional a AOE radiation DOT for science officers too. Some of the other great AOE abilities for science aren't available for your science bridge officers, frankly. They're only available on your captains, so we deal with what, what we have. For the, for the engineering ones, there, there's a little bit of less of a selection of the ones that I personally like. Um, the strongest ones by far, in my opinion, is first off, Sabotage, which is basically an, an AoE version of Weapon mal Malfunction. This is from a lockbox as well, but it is well worth the cost, though. The other one I like a lot is the Photon Grenade Launcher. This is available to um, TOS captains from the TOS... Um, Earth, Earth space dock, or if if you're already in the modern Star Trek Online, um, it is also available from the K13 fleet holding. Is I think you, I think you have to, you have to get to level two in in, in the K13 holding in order to be able to get the photon grenade launcher. 
I like the photon grenade launcher a lot, a lot because the point of having an engineer is to have a, is to have a version of, of, of a mortar available to, um, to to get rid of a lot of, of enemies that have like spawned in walls, spawned underneath the floor, in the ceiling, etc. And normally you're you're stuck having to get having to lose a lieutenant commander or the commander slot for your your engineer to to put in a quantum mortar to have that ability available to them. If you use the phone talk grenade launcher, you can put a mortar effectively in the ensign slot instead of a lieutenant commander or commander slot, which is really really nice. Um, I like I can allow you to put some of these other more powerful abilities at at, at higher ranks to that officer, so that they can be much more effective during combat instead of being a just in case officer. I like shield recharge a lot because it's a spammable shield heal. There aren't a lot of shield heals available in the game, so it's really nice to have that. Medical generator, medical generator is a nice AOE heal as well. Well, sustained heal. Quantum mortar is still a nice, um, decent option if, if you know I have access to a photon grenade launcher. And then a shield generator fabrication and a turret fabrication are nice um, things, to, uh, some, some nice fabrications to put down as well if, if that's what, what you want your play style to be for your bridge officers. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. As for tactical, as I was saying, I'm not a big fan of tactical. Suppressing fire is is the only only bridge officer ability I actually like for bridge officers anyway. There's a lot of other tactical abilities which are very very nice that if you're an actual player in the game, you you can use them very effectively. The AI in the game is really stupid, so they are not going so you can basically count on them not use, using them correctly. Suppressing fire is very useful. Um, for, for my leveling build, I have these other three tactical abilities on that tactical officer. Outside of that one specific um, setup, I, I typically just have suppressing fire and, and three other specialist abilities on, the, on my tactical officer instead of real tactical abilities. When it comes to, to some of the specializations, Temporal Operative is probably the best one of all of them, frankly. Um, you, you get on, um, an ability called Paradox Bomb, which is really, really strong against some of your other really, really strong ground enemies inside the game. It's It's got one of the strongest AoE pulls in the game for ground combat, which is super nice. Um, it also does some damage as well. Chronometric Diffusion for an AoE damage reduction and Temporal Narcosis for a really, really nasty physical DOT. It's also pretty nice as well. But Paradox Bomb by itself is, is worth it. And whenever you train a bridge officer in the Temporal Opera Specialization, by default, they get Paradox Bomb 2 in their commander um, slot. Now, Paradox Bomb 3 is the strongest version in the commander slot, but for, for, for that ease of utility, Paradox Bomb 2 is, is more than sufficient for most of the content inside the game. You have to go to like the hardest two ground missions for you to really, really want Paradox Bomb 3. As you ask for the command specialization, it's one of the oldest in, in the game. And take cover and strategic analysis are both extremely strong. The reason why take cover is so strong, by the way, is because for some reason, the computer AI for the bridge officers do not like to crouch very much. However, if you have one of your officers have the command specialization and use take cover, your bridge officers are extremely likely now to actually crouch so they can get that healing. But the big benefit is that your bridge officers are actually going to be willing to crouch despite their really stubborn AI, which a difference between whenever you're getting hit and standing up versus being hit and crouching, this already makes them quite a bit more substantial um, for survivability. It's also why for, for my Bills that I'll be showing take care for is going to be at rank one because I'm, I'm already going to be getting the benefit of my bridge officers wanting to crouch just from that ability. Strategic analysis is a um, damage overtime buff to, to your entire team. Gradually throughout combat, your, your bridge officers will gradually do more and more and more damage, which is really nice. Return fire is also a, a decent one as a decent little filler one so that if you're Bridge officers are kind of in, in, in a pickle and starting to lose a lot of HP. 
Return Fire is there to help make sure that they're able to get their project officer's ability back faster so that, that they can ideally, you know, get their more of their abilities off and hopefully defeat the enemy before they all die. Timely Intervention and Hammer and Anvil are both very situational as to whether they would actually be good. In a lot of modern Star Trek Online, they really wouldn't be, but I do have situations where I actually do have them in like two builds in, in this video. As for the other two specializations, we have Miracle Worker and, and Intelligence. Harmonine Shields is basically just um, an AoE version of Shield Recharge. And Throw Regenerator of the Can on Canister is basically just an, an AoE ver version of Vascular Regenerator. Pretty, pretty straightforward there, frankly. Frictionless Particle Grenade um, is, is a very old and classic ability. It is one of the better ones for bridge officers. Frankly, though, I personally like Seismic ag Agitation Field um, for, 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 your, for my science bridge officers. It's basically Frictionless Particle Grenade, except it's much more spamble and much more likely to have, have a knockup to, to enemies. Frictionless Particle Grenade doesn't have as much knockup to have a bit of a slow and a damage resistance rating debuff to enemies in, in the AoE. And Resonance Tech and Stream is a Shield Steel. But that's that's why, by the way, in my build, you're gonna see you're not going to see Frictionless Particle Grenade, but in Team Space Princess's build, you will. All right, so let's go ahead and start about start talking about the equipment now for our bridge officers. Before we get into this, though, this is just the rules I'm going by. It, um, for for the science officers for for these builds, the point is, is to focus on kit enhancement, so things that add kit performance, kit efficiency slash kit cooldowns, or enhances the damage over time of the abilities coming from the bridge officer. For tactical and engineering officers. Because their their kit or because because their, because their kit module abilities aren't necessarily as important, have, have having sets that focus on team wide buffs is going to be much more substantial overall to to the to their and to the overall team team effectiveness. Buffing damage, HP, regen, dodge chance, whatever it is, those types of things is what's going to be the best for those officers. As a friendly reminder, I am able to easily complete. Elite level um, story missions with these these bridge off with, with with a lot of these bridge officers, even with terrible traits, with, with just a lot of these rep, 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 reputation sets on them. It's not rep, reputation sets that are upgraded to Mark 15 Epic. Just Mark 12, very rare, is completely sufficient to handle ground content at elite difficulty inside of this game. Now, if you're going if you're going to handle elite um, TFOs, that's a different matter. But for elite story missions. Mark 12 very rare equipment is totally fine and, and it's more than sufficient. As for our sets for our non-science um, bridge officers, the first one is going to be the Gamma Reputations um, ground set. The equipment isn't necessarily super noteworthy. It's, it's definitely fine, but it's not like super spectacular. The big thing is the two and three piece set bonus, especially at the two piece bonus, um, you give to yourself and to your entire team, additional 10% weapon damage. And at, at, at the three set, you get an additional max HP and max shield capacity. There's also damage with resistance rating added to that too, but that's really in, inconsequential in, in the grand scheme of things. The other one that's really, really good is the Omega Force ground set. So in the um, Task Force Omega re reputation, there are three different ground sets available. The Omega Force ground set is the one ground set that is the exact same name, exact same looks for all factions inside of the game. So it's you don't have to worry about the, well, maybe this is a different name because I, I'm killing on set of Federation. No. Omega Force is the name of the set. <clears throat> Omega Force is the name of the set for all factions, all players inside of the game. The big thing for this is, is the three-piece set bonus of Team Am Ambush Field, which gives you additional dodge chance, passive dodge chance to yourself and to all of your allies. Um, when, I, when I was reading up some of the forums of some people that you know had gone to several hundred um, levels in the Reno Sompec, some of them had, had had fun and had all five of them wear, wear the Omega Force ground set. And 
had a ridiculous amount of passive dodge chance on their on their, their whole team. Not sure if that that stacking still exists today, but but if it does, it's probably still a, a decent set for if you're going to do the arena of of, of Sulpec with a pre-made group of friends. As as for the science equipment itself, the first one to point out is the temporal defense armor with the competitive shield and weapon. I, I love this armor a lot for DPS science because the passive gives you an additional 25% um, damage to to all of your damage over time and hazard effects. Um, technically, there, there are a couple of environmental suits and stuff which, because of its good performance and efficiency, that's passively on, this, on the armor, it technically could beat it out. But, uh, but more often than not, you're going to have to use Lobi to get that. And all this stuff here is either from missions or from rep reputation, which is generally going to be a little bit cheaper for you. So um, additionally, with with that buff to DOT stuff from from this uh, from from the science captain's abilities, um, I'm also using the two piece bonus from the competitive um, rep reputations duelist duelist set, the shield and, and and the weapon, to get additional kit readiness so that the abilities go off faster. And initially, the shield um, is it's a pretty good survival type shield inside of the game. Well, the armor and the shield are both very, very good from the competitive reputation, but we can't really afford to put the armor on this character as well. But it's all super good, and it's a very solid set, um, group group of stuff overall here. And another pretty common one is to, is to use the the Lucari three piece ground set. Especially if you're going to have a dedicated science healer in, in your team, this is basically the best in slot stuff to put on them. Um, the two piece set allows them to um, heal 25% uh, more effectively. Um, the shield has some AoE stuff going on with it in case you get targeted, that it does some AoE shield and, 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 and um, health, health healing to um, allies in, in an aura. And then the three piece also. Gives you some healing from incoming damage that becomes more and more probable as your shields go down. So it's a pretty decent set that's basically designed around being self-sufficient so that you, you can send out more heals to your allies. That's, that's what the set's about. It is very, very nice. Now, if you don't want to deal with reputation stuff, another decent one is the Furtive per Perseverance 3 piece set. I typically call this these the survivor missions set. Um, I mean, the, the equipment is pretty lackluster, to be honest, besides the fact that you get some dodge chance off, off of the armor. The big thing is that from the two and three piece um, set, set bonus stuff, you get some kit readiness and kit performance, which allowing your um, stuff to be a little bit more effective and to go off quicker or more more frequently is, is always nice to have, too. Whenever I um, typically have well, whenever I'm uh, on one of my captains that has three science bridge officers, I, I will typically have the furtive perseverance on, on my third science officer. Okay, so let's go ahead and finalize this video with going over a couple of the away team setups um, that I have made for um, you all in, in this video. For this, I have five setups that I've made for myself, um, for you all anyway. And then we'll have Team Space Princesses um, kind of two setups. The second setup here is just about the same as, as the normal one, but one besides just one bridge officer ability change. But for mine, I have five, and I'll explain each one of those as, as we get to them. For this first one is the, is what I would personally call the standard leveling um, group, group of bridge officer abilities. This is the group of abilities that, that I made and in my opinion, it is one of the best combos out there, frankly, for like a science healer, a science buffer, uh, or, or a science debuffer, an AOE damage person, an, a, an engineer construct, and then a tactical distractor, essentially. Um, all of these abilities, every single one of them, is, a, is available to be obtained from the bridge officer trainer off of, off of Earth's space dock or Kronos First City. You don't have to go to the exchange, you don't have to worry about crafting. All of these are available from the trainer, and so therefore it's it's extremely easy, extremely cheap for basically any captain in the game to get these officers on on their bridge officers. 
Also, at, at level 65, these these are still doable um, as long as you're at normal difficulty for four missions. If you want to go at any more difficult, you'll need to use one of my other um, combos of abilities here. Oh, and just as an FYI, I, I do have, have a little um, like um, key over here just because in some of these other uh, bridge after builds here, the, the colors are going to get kind of wonky here. And so I've got a little key here to kind of like to help explain what's going on. So for instance, in this situation where I'm, I'm adding specialization abilities, some stuff from the summer event as well as K13, I, I have three different colors going on here in, in, in all of this. We've also changed some of these things quite a bit versus the last slide in which Tactical had, had, had four abilities. My Tactical Officer is now a Command Specialist, and three of the four abilities are now Command Abilities instead of Tactical Abilities. And engineering is also a Miracle Worker with, with Harmonized Shields right here. From K-13, you, you can get the Photon Grenade Launcher. Any faction can get it from K-13. Um, technically, you, you can sell the Photon Grenade Launcher on the Exchange if you didn't get it from K-13. But if you, if you buy from the exchange, only TOS captains can actually train it. So that is, that is, is a bit of a downside. So just buy from, from K13 and you're not going to have issues there. When it comes to these science officers, instead of one officer dedicated to healing and one dedicated to AOE stuff, um, I, I personally like a little bit of, of a mix of both. Now, obviously, one of them is going to be my, my healer with two healing abilities. The other one... I have trained in Temporal Operative to get to get Paradox Bomb in there. And for this particular build, it also is going to have Chronometric Diffusion on, on top of it. Both of them have Seismic Agitation Field, just because that, that that's a really nice control AoE um, knock-up slash pull slash damaging ability, which is really strong with Metal, Metal Strike Order on both of them, just as, as an easy spamble heal. Um, for this next build here, what I've simply done is just added um, two lockbox abilities um, over, over to these um, these officers. As you can see here, for, for, for the engineer, we no longer actually have to have the engineer trained in Miracle Worker because all four of these these abilities are all en en engineering specific abilities. Sabotage is decently expensive on, on the exchange and for good reason because it is a really, really strong ability. An AOE, an AOE weapon disable is very nice to have. Also for science, I've added Cold Fusion Flash 3 over to one of my science officers. It is one of the best AOE science abilities in the game, so for, the, for some of the most ideal builds, you're going to have Cold Fusion Flash in there. Other than that, it's basically stayed the same. As for a special challenge mode, for those of you that are like, well, I don't like science. I, I just want to have tactical officers. This is the combo that I have tested and found to be the most effective in my runs. When I've been doing elite um, ground missions, just checking them out. You still should have one engineering officer because enemies could still spawn in walls, under the floor, and the ceiling. So having some sort of mortar available is still going to be borderline necessary unless you are an engineering captain and have, have a mortar available on your captain, which then you could technically go four tactical officers and have the fourth one have um, the intelligence specialization. Um, but but a, lot, a lot of this stuff here is kind of just, it's kind of synergistic with um, the theme of, of temporal operatives for the specialization of, you know, being, being able, able to stret, uh, spread ent ent entropy throughout a lot of enemies, and then spending the en entropy to do something special. For Miracle Worker, a lot of this is just buffing your own team. It's kind of how, how, how that uh, particular specialization works. Command's basically the same, except we now are using, using Timely Intervention because it's one of the few heals, frankly, available um, in specializations, so we're going to use it. It's it's a it's a little heal that also gives some temporary um, in, invincibility to to an ally, but engineering is basically staying the same for for this particular build. Now, if you'd rather have three science officers, that's what I would call the easy mode, and it's very very straightforward. Three officers, 
All of them have seismic agitation field one in the ensign um, slot because seismic agitation field, whenever you're scaling it, it up to higher ranks, it's only the, the raw damage on this thing that scales up. The percentage chance to have knockups and pulls in is, is the exact same from rank one to rank three. So from all of that, I, I just have that there with medical tricorder in the lead lieutenant slot. And then from there, it's whatever the theme is for, for that particular character. For temporary operative, it's still the same with Cold Fusion, Foxy, Paradox, Bomb. Or it's my second science, has Sonic Disruption for an interrupt with Fast Curve Generator 3 for an extra nice heal. Um, my, my third science captain still is using um, command, just like the old um, tactical officer that, that this one replaced. Which gives you analysis and take cover. As, as some nice buffs there. So to, cl to close out this, we'll show that I'll show the two basically same builds from Team Space Princess. Um, because again, these builds were initially made when there was only two specializations in the game, and, and the AI worked a little bit different back then, and enemies took a little bit longer to to defeat as well. Some of these um, uh, bridge option abilities were built around that that particular theme. And as I mentioned earlier, Frictionless Particle Grenade is extremely similar in effectiveness to um, Seismic Agitation Field. Just that Seismic Agitation Field is a lot more spammable, and Agitation Field has a much higher chance for a knockup than what Frictionless Particle Grenade actually has for, in the Intel Specialization. Other than that, a lot of the stuff in these builds are kind of similar. As I mentioned before, the big thing about engineering is, is having a mortar available, and Team Space Prince, Princess didn't feel like any of the other engineering stuff was really worthwhile, so they just had three other command abilities there instead of some of the other heals that I personally recommend to have in the in the engineering slot. Also, back in the day here, um, the K13 photon grenade launcher did not exist at that point, which is also why they're using Quantum Mortar 2 instead. Other than that, the two science captains are pretty similar besides the lieutenant commander slot right here. Which is then changed um, whenever you whenever they, they do the build allowing the lockbox to have one of them be replaced with a cold fusion flash. That's just a nice additional AoE um, ability. But yeah, um, that's basically it for, for those abilities. And such, um, hopefully that gave you all some brainstorming ideas, or if you want to just copy one of them, you're more than welcome to. I mean, that's kind of the point of this video, is to give you some options and allow you to brainstorm. You can feel free to comment in the, in the description, or comment in the comment section below this video, as for, for your own personal uh, opinions on it. Again, as I said, probably in, in September-ish, I'll probably do another video upon some of the better performing Sompeg builds that are out there. And as at that point, you actually be able to go past the first couple of um, parts of, of the SOMPEC um, TFO and actually be able to go to many, many, many more, more levels in it. But anyway, um, hopefully um, you all enjoy it uh, and can, can enjoy ground builds a little bit more um, in Star Trek Online. Thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.